welcome back to the Mel K show. I got my good friend back, Jeff Dornick. We're always trying to get together and kind of cut through all the chaos and talk about what's going on and what we should actually be looking at, what matters uh, the most right now. So thank you for joining me, Jeff. Thanks for having me back on, Mel. It's it's always a blast talking to you. I know, I love it too. We 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 are we try to stay very sober and focused and clear while anyone everyone else is kind of chasing everything. So right now, this morning, um, obviously our last show, we talked a lot about the uh, manufactured uh, conflict and back and forth between the DeSantis, uh, you know, whatever his whole online army was and everyone else and now DeSantis has left the uh the playing field he has also come out to support Donald Trump so lots of talking going on on all sides what do you make of this and where do you see this heading um I so what's interesting is I think that there is a in my opinion looking at what's going on I think there's a disconnect between the Ron DeSantis official team and the Ron DeSantis unofficial team. I think I think the official team, the Ron DeSantis, you know, of people that were paid uh, working on the campaign, they're all I think coalescing around Donald Trump because they they understand the implications of all this. They understand that you know we cannot allow Joe Biden to get an, get another term. So we got to figure out how do we win in a landslide so, so that way they can't steal an election. The whole deal. Talking to a lot of the DeSantis influencers and and a lot a lot of their accounts that are that are that are online, it seems as if they are beginning to coalesce around RFK. Right. Um, it, you know, they they've become this very anti-Trump movement, and they're and what's interesting is talking to a lot of them. It's very rooted in emotion. They hate Trump. Uh, they they hate the 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 Dilly team and and all the MAGA influencers and all that kind of stuff. So like, I will never vote for Donald Trump ever. I actually had one guy t- today on Twitter tell me that uh, policy doesn't matter. Tr- Trump is an awful person. I can never vote for him. And I'm like, you do realize you're just going to turn our country over to the literally the pits of hell. Uh, so there seems to be this disconnect between the the DeSantis campaign that is now conceded and now coalescing around Trump and the DeSantis supporters who are really enraged with this uh, TDS, I think. Yeah, I agree. And the, the really very scary part, scary part is what you're saying. And this is this is a big problem, I think, with the obviously and we'll get into it later, amplified uh, Twitter accounts. Now, the good news for everyone out there that Jeff and I both know is that life does not evolve on tw- everything on planet Earth does not go on on Twitter. In fact, there are hundreds of millions of people not on Twitter and there are many hundreds of millions of people that have Twitter accounts and do not go there at all. So there is this illusion, I think, also uh, invested in by not just Elon Musk, but, you know, the the whole when Alex Jones came back and it was like, woohoo, Alex, and it went nuts. And the truth is, Twitter does not determine what is going on in America. And it is a very uh, siloed area as well. So everyone that's acting like Twitter is the town square that will decide everything. It is a very important battlefield in the information war. But again, a lot of things that are going on on Twitter seem to me to be very manipulated, very intel oriented. And as I uh, contend, we have a globalist billionaire oligarchy running our nation right now and many nations in the world that are functioning on a supra level. And I believe that Elon Musk is one of those people for good or bad. So going back to reality, what I do see is a lot of people coming up with reasons uh, to not like Trump, be it he was Operation Warp Speed, or it's, um, or it's like you said, they don't like his personality, or uh, they still believe that he colluded with Russia. Whatever the case may be, I think the big problem is that the influencers that have the loudest voices are not talking about the real threat to the United States of America. They are not talking about the globalist threat. They're not talking about the World War Three. Th- threat. And I don't think they're really identifying the enemy still. It still seems like a left, right, Republican, Democrat paradigm that I don't believe is real, nor do I think that that is our problem. Right. No, I I, I totally agree. And it's like when you when you look at the major issues, and, th- and this is where I've been talking to a lot of you know people that are in, kind of running in my circles and friends that aren't even on social media and, yeah. all, and all that. It's like my my main priorities when it comes to this upcoming election, we've got to deal with the illegal immigration. We've got to have we got to have somebody in there with the right foreign policy and get us out, out of all right. these ridiculous wars. We've got to deal with this insane economy and inflation. And just because I'm really concerned, we're going to be hitting hyperinflation really soon, which it's it will ramp things up. Up 
to where realistically we're probably at about 30 percent inflation right now. Exactly. It'll ramp up. It, it could ramp up to like a thousand percent inflation. And you see some of these third world countries, they go to like a thousand percent inflation every single day. It's yeah. crazy once you hit hyperinflation. So we've got to deal with all those things. We've got to deal with the intelligence agencies. If we don't deal with this shadow government that's going on, we don't have a country. And then we've also got to, we've also got to deal with election fraud. So when, when we're dealing with all this, I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, that that were like pro DeSantis and pro kind of Republican, whatever it is, they're like, I'm going to have no other choice than to vote for Trump. Now, a lot of them are jumping over to RFK. And I've been very open to RFK. I endorsed him when he was running as a Democrat. I endorsed Trump when he, obviously as a Republican. Um, and as I'm looking towards the 2024 general, if you're going to vote for RFK because you feel like he's going to be better than Trump on those like five issues, I'm all for it. But very few people are actually doing it for that reason. They're doing it out of spite for Donald Trump. Right. And that's my problem with it. You've, we've got to prioritize what is important to this country. I'd rather have a jerk and an a-hole on Twitter in, in the White House yeah. than to completely turn over the country to the Marxists. Well, that's what we need to. And uh, obviously, last week I did, as my audience knows, live from Davos with Nor Ben Laden every day. And we went through all the different panels, which are not panels because they're not debates. They're actually press conferences for what these people are planning and are convincing us uh, it's too late for us to have a choice, which is not true. But um, what she was saying being there on the ground was that Donald Trump was the uh, main topic everywhere she went. Yeah, the, Donald Trump was living rent free in the billionaire globalist oligarchy uh, confab there in Davos in their heads. And um, we saw this morning, uh, Alex uh, Soros shared that uh, very disturbing bullet hole and $47 from the also equally globalist uh, Lorraine Powell Jobs uh, Atlantic, which is anything but bipartisan, um, fully globalistly controlled the, the Atlantic itself. That's from there. So whatever the case may be, the globalists are very upset about Donald Trump. We also had Harari, who I've been exposing for a very long time. You and everyone else says exactly what he is, uh, just truly a, a anti-human one of these globalist um, handler, you know, manipulators that are trying to tell everyone uh, that what is real and what is not. So where we are now is I think people aren't fully understanding the threat to Donald. The threat of Donald Trump is dismantling the cancer that has captured the world. That is this globalist um, top down supra above all of our government's group of people that believe that they're the parent company, basically a parent about uh, planet Earth. So even if your issues are what we're talking about, the fact that those people remember, he pulled out of UNESCO, pulled out of the who pulled out of Paris Climate Accords. He was dismantling Agenda 2030. And I don't think enough people in America understand a the threat of that. And B, that those people are so scared of him that they're saying it out loud like Harari did should be something that we coalesce around whether you like him or not. Yeah, it's it's very it's very true. And it's and it's also interesting too, because you know, when when you you know you're you're touting, you know, Trump's accomplishments and he and he did a lot for this country that that the vast majority of a pair of Americans either don't give him credit for or they don't realize that they should be giving him credit for the for those things. Uh but but when you when you actually look at it, you even look at the the handling of COVID. Like I, I disagree with a lot of a lot of the, the statements that he's made, some of the decisions that he's made, things along those lines. But there was a couple of things that I thought was very key. Number one, he he delegated to the states, which is like the first time I think I've ever seen a president in my lifetime actually do that. They always try to, you know, shore up power for themselves and, and all and all of that. But then but number two, and, and Karen Kingston and I have been talking about this quite often on, on our show, is that, you know, for for all of Trump's faults in his handling and, and the, the way he did COVID, his contract with with big pharma was yeah. top notch and that's what's opened up uh, at, um uh, the the Texas attorney general to be able to sue them was that they had they it, in order for them to have immunity and protection they had to have a safe and effective vaccine and we've proven beyond a shadow of doubt of a doubt they don't have a safe and effective vaccine so if it wasn't for Donald Trump's contract that he had with them we would not be able to sue them in the way that we're able to now uh, because they would just fall into all the rest of the, all the rest of the vaccine laws where they they kind of you know, are able to scapegoat everything. But because of that specific clause in the Trump between Donald Trump's administration and Big Pharma, that opens up everything that, that we're now seeing with with uh, with Paxton and his lawsuit. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I got to get Karen back on to go over that again, because the truth is nobody is talking about that. And that is a very big deal. And that should be something that people get behind. And, um, you know, not not only was it not safe and effective, but there's evidence that they knew it wasn't safe and effective way before they rolled it out. 
and, and the other thing that's coming and that is such a good point and i'm so glad you brought that up and for people that are watching this that don't know jeff and jeff and karen have both done extensive shows on this topic of the contract that donald trump have um, has and why it could lead to actual actual accountability and justice here uh, and kind of break that loophole that um they have for no immunity um so that's an important thing also um, I do believe, I'm sure you saw the, the, one of the big, big names out there that gets all the attention is, uh, Tim Poole. And he had a big fight with, I love Luke, we are changed. I just did his show. So they were arguing on the show and it's funny cause I had just done Luke's show and I said what he was saying and we discussed it and then he says it. And then Tim Poole goes nuts. who wasn't even a Trump guy, um, saying what I believe. And I wonder what you think. I believe that Donald Trump, um, should come out at some point in some way and tell the story of COVID from his point of view, because I think that that would be healing. It would, it would, some of these people would have to accept what happened. I still see there's people that I, I admire. I follow, especially big libertarians out there that will never forgive him for operation warp speed. Like that's what they're hanging their hat on. Like you can't forget this from his point of view. And, and you've had on plenty of people to explain also what was going on behind the scenes. There's Dr. Alexander, Dr. Atlas, a lot of people that went in there and said some, they're, they're lying to him, coordinating it on purpose to his face. And we're watching this happen. And then handlers were keeping people away from him and he's in an impossible position. So what do you think of that? I, I really do. I, I know that he has a very tight group of people. I personally know this around him that kind of control, like, who gets in, but I think somebody should get in his ear and say, you know what, sit down with somebody and tell the story of the country doing really great. And the knock on the door when they said, Hey, we have a problem in China and it's coming here. No, I, 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 I a hundred percent agree with you. I think, I think that that would, that would be so important. Cause I think we only get these little s sound bite clips of, of him kind of referring to things and, Oh, I saved this many, this many millions of lives, or I, or we did this and, but we're not getting the full picture. I don't, I don't think. And that's, and for me, that's not an excuse for in my in my again in my opinion Donald Trump being dead wrong on a lot of the things that he said about it but okay. I think it will it will add context and it will add understanding to why he made particular decisions and again and I've said this from the very beginning I can't fault anybody for the way that they reacted in the in the early days right. because none of us knew what the heck was going on now from that perspective from a constitutional perspective I have a direct uh, I, I have a very strong opinion that I don't think that any governor ever should have locked down because they don't have the authority to lock down. And I've said this about everybody from Gavin Newsom to Cuomo all the way down to Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis locked down for a month and then he, and then he continued to run run the entire state at 25 percent capacity in restaurants and businesses for another six months. So so for all the people that are trying to criticize Trump for the handle for his handling of everything, Trump didn't lock down states. It was the governors. And and again, so when we when we look at all of this, we've got we've got to understand the full context of who's responsible for what why did donald trump make particular decisions based upon the information yeah. that he had at that time and i gotta say when it comes to our constitutional rights and you can correct me if i'm wrong i can't think of any constitutional right that i personally lost because of a decision that donald trump made i can find plenty of constitutional um rights that a lot of us lost because of what governors and secretaries of state and and uh, uh court uh, decisions and state legislatures i can find a lot of those i can't find any from donald trump in his handling of COVID. well that's an excellent uh excellent way to put it that is that is very true i agree with that as well and the other thing that we have to remember is that um, we did a lot. I didn't. You didn't. We were we were again. We were bucking the system the whole time. I was in actually Times Square with RFK Jr. and a bunch of people while it, New York was locked down. And we were like on. I was on stage. There was all these people. A lot of the frontline doctors were mutually friends with, like saying that this is crazy, whatever. So there was enough. Now, now what we do have to remember is that. People did comply and a lot of people did comply. There's still people getting boosters. New York is still totally, I feel like, because the, the thing in New York that I'll get into in a second on this, on the next level is that they have these kiosks on every corner in New York City and they have ads basically from New York State, New York City, um, most of them. And they're all pushing either DEI or, you know, the BLM messaging or some kind of messaging or and they're constantly pushing the boosters, get your booster, get your shot. They are on every 
corner in New York City. And the truth is that they're actually watching the people, not really ads. But it's it's a lot of mind control, a lot of messaging that people aren't even they're subconsciously taking it in. So we do have a lot of people in America that so they've been talking about the Davos and other places, this disease X, which has had a holder, as you know, and you and Karen have talked about it. I've talked about it in uh, Congress. They already addressed this. It has a lot to do with the World Health Organization um, treaty that we should absolutely reject. But um, how do you feel? Because I do think that they are going to try to do this again. Um, and, and people are saying to me, do you think they'll lock us down again? And I keep saying, not if we don't let them. What are your thoughts on that, knowing what we know now and, and what you said about constitutionality? Yeah, I, I, I think that, in my opinion, the especially the, the Democrat states will try and do it again. And, and, and this this was my criticism of, of a lot of the Republican governors, you know, Abbott, DeSantis, a lot of the, a lot of those guys that that did lock down initially. And then they and then when they when they flipped. What they did, they didn't cite the Constitution. What they cited was the data. So it, the logical conclusion of that is that if the data held up and lockdowns were effective, DeSantis and Abbott and these other Republican governors would have continued to lock down their states. So it wasn't that they were violating people's constitutional right to peaceably assemble. It wasn't it wasn't you know anything along those lines or their ability to own and operate a business or even private property rights or things along those lines. Like none of that was in consideration of why they reopened up. It all had to do with they with the, when they realized that their constituents thought felt like they were being lied to by Fauci and the CDC. And so then they opened back up because they said the data was wrong. So if we're looking at, you know, the next pandemic that's that's coming or the next, you know, bioweapon or whatever you want to call Climate it. Climate emergency pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it could be any all all all, all of the above. Right. When, when you when you look at what's coming next, they're going to do this exact same tactics. And especially at the very least, half the state that are Democrats. I'm in communist California still. Uh, we'll, we'll, pro we'll probably be, be facing that at some point as well. Um, but for me, I'm I'm looking ahead of I'm concerned that maybe the next pandemic is not go is actually going to be deadly, and that that's my concern with all. That. And I was talking with my good buddy Chad Caton, um, who's out in South Carolina. He's working with Veterans for Trump now. And one of the things that he said is, is that he's like my concern with this whole you know with the medical freedom movement is that he's like I'm totally on board, but also, and I agree with this. What happens if the next one is actually legitimately deadly, and then all of a sudden every all of us start rejecting what whatever the antidote is. And right. so we're kind of stuck in limbo of how do we handle this of we believe in medical freedom. I've committed. I'm not taking any shot, you know, fr from big farm at all because I don't trust them all. But what if that's the only antidote? I I'm sitting here and I'm like, I could see so many different scenarios go going on. And you talk about depopulation. Now they, now they just psyop to everybody in, in order to basically offing themselves. Oh, my God. This is such a great topic right now because I've been thinking about this too. Because let's 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 be honest, and I've covered extensively uh, from a, a unknown a one term senator named Barack Obama who went with uh, Senator Luger to start bioweapons labs back when before he was even president. That would be Obama in Ukraine and all over the world. We're told that there are hundreds of labs, not just in America, everywhere. And then if we're doing it again, I, I say this about Elon Musk being the biggest uh, defense contractor for America. Well. What other countries is he the, the biggest defense contractor? So what? Uh, how many? How many bioweapons labs does every other country have? All the way from you know rogue players to allies. Who cares? You know, and and then the private companies. Oh, you're in California, I think they're all over the place. They're not just the one Chinese one that they found. So I agree with you a hundred percent that this is. Um, I think maybe the entire COVID, I always call it the pandemic, was a run through, a simulation, because looking back at how these people have done this, and don't forget, you and I have said many times, they tried to have an outbreak like this multiple times on the population. We got Ebola, we got SARS, we got all kinds of the bird flu, you know, whatever. If they could have riled any of those to the level that they did and pumped it up, uh, there's a very good chance this would have happened a long time ago because this scenario has always been in the in their uh, sites. You and I also covered it, and my audience all knows about Event 201. So there's a very good chance that that was a run through. And what you're saying is very, very important, which is why we have to find the balance. And we also have to go back through who was right from the very beginning as, as you talk about Karen, but who was right from the very beginning and never wavered all the way through and empower those people to have the information and the data and all of that up front. You know, there's people like um, 
Dell Bigtree and Ed Dowd and some of these, um, Steve Kirsch, there's people that weren't involved in the beginning um, that have put a lot of time, effort, energy, and money into this. So we have all those people. And then we have the doctors, like the, unfortunately our friend, Dr. Zelenko has passed away, but I still like, I look at Dr. Stella. I look at, I do look at Dr. Lapidow. I look at, there's a lot of people too, that should, I think, be empowered. And, um, you know, whatever you say about RFK Jr., he had a lot of doctors that he worked with, especially in writing both books. Those people need to be empowered um, in a way that somehow the deep state and the, and the globalists have empowered CDC and FDA. Those people have to get together and organize without there being uh, egos, politics, all of that, and really look at whatever's coming our way. Very objective. I, I think that, that this is a time for us to really um, go through that health freedom movement that is in shambles right now on many levels. There's all kinds of lawsuits and fights and this and that and say enough of that. We need to have a counter to whatever's coming and it's gotta be now. Givaderm is a luxurious, toxin-free skincare that actually works. Not only do we take the toxins out, we put the most powerful nutrients in. All of our products are an effective way to detoxify, replenish, and protect your skin. Our toxin-free, natural ingredients provide real results without compromising your skin's health. Unlock the secret to beautiful, healthy skin using this synergistic skincare system. It's never too late or too early to begin living a more beautiful life with Give a Derm. Natural, healthy skin. Head over to the MelKShow.com partners page and get a 10% discount now. Yeah, well, you know, and, and th see, this is this is the one this is the one area. And, you know, and again, I'm still I'm still wrestling through uh, through 2024. Wh where are we going and all that? This is the one area where I, I'm still somewhat hesitant when it comes to President Trump. And this this is the one area where I, I would be more open to an RFK is that if the next pandemic does come out, who who is trusting the right people? I mean, like that that's that I want to know. And this is where what you're saying if Donald Trump came out and lay and laid out exactly what happened and fully explained everything, I, I feel like that would that would calm a lot of fears about who is Donald Trump trusting right now. Because for me, the way that I look at it is, did Trump learn uh, learn from the mistakes that he made in the in the first term? That's something that I don't know because he and his team are pretty uh, you know tight lipped about a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and and so when we're looking at okay, are we looking at the next bioweapon, you know, massive spread, the next pandemic, something that's actually deadly? And we're looking for an antidote. Are we going to go back to the same Pfizer, Moderna people that that have wiped out a, right. a, you know millions of people, or are we going to go with with alternative uh, or you know following the truth, following the facts? Are we trusting the right doctors? And yeah. that's the one thing where I, I keep coming back to: if we are looking at this objectively, take out our personal preferences on this. If we're if we're looking at this objectively. I feel like personally, at least as of right now, I would be I would be more inclined to go RFK than Donald Trump when it comes to handling another pandemic. But then again, if I get the full explanation from Trump, maybe that would call my fears. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? Mel? Well, I still also, quite honestly, I, I know RFK Jr. said he would never do it, but I still think the two of them together would be the best case scenario for America right now. I know that they don't agree on a lot of stuff, but we do have these extraordinary circumstances and there needs to be leadership. And what, what you brought up about Donald Trump is very, very important because my, my big thing is geopolitics. That's really where I focus. A lot of my energy and effort is in following the money, especially in the endless wars and the dark budgets and, and where the globalists end and our governments begin. And another uh, scenario of what you're talking about is I do most importantly, I, I don't care as much about who his vice president is as who his attorney general will be, because the choices that he made of Christopher Ray and Bill Barr, if you look at them now, are very easily straight up, no way, full stop, should they have ever gotten those positions. Both of them are, are total and completely uh, neocon, globalist. Uh, deep state from the beginning, for, literally from birth. Both of them were born into the deep state, were born into this privileged elitist class. Um, you know, everyone knows about, you know, his uh, Barr's father ran, ran the Dalton School where Jeffrey Epstein got his first job. You know, these are not, these are people that were born into that 1% world. Um, you know, what's his name? Ray. He went to Andover. He then went to the Poison Ivy League. And then the Poison Ivy League somehow ends up at the top of the FBI. These, these are, these are people that Donald Trump put in there. And, and th this is where the Donald Trump presidency now it, 
needs to be very, in my opinion, and, and what I do want to know is, is very different than the last time. But what I also believe is something you said earlier in this conversation, and this is about him coming clean as to exactly leveling with us what his personal honest to God experience was when the knock came on the door. And I believe it was Jared Kushner uh, and Pence that said, uh, we have a problem. There's an outbreak. You know, when that started, if you could just tell his thinking and where that went and what, because I, I don't doubt that they brought in Fauci and Burks and, and, and he thought, well, they run this, and if if they're trying to fight this, they're probably good people. I think it was a very just surface, like, you know, he's overwhelmed from all sides. He, he probably, I mean, I think it's probably the Transition Integrity Project planned it, but he probably was like, okay, well, we're, we, we're good on health. The CDC is a good, a good organization. We're good on, they can handle it. Like, I, I probably feel that, you know, whatever. But still, the big problem is that, most of his hires uh, were suggested by people that were totally involved in his demise and, and in it from the beginning, including, I believe, Pence. But now that's a, that's a concern for me as well, is who is recommending who now? And again, on the flip side, I believe that Donald Trump is, in fact, a human being, regardless of how they've painted him. I've happened to not just have seen him and been there. I also, when I was younger, briefly worked at Mar-a-Lago and saw how he is with employees and with his family up close. So. I believe that what also we're not seeing is how the last four years or actually, you know, eight years affected the human being, Donald Trump, because to think that he has not been humbled, has not been brought to his knees, has not have to, had to have multiple come to Jesus moments, has not had to, has it not broken his heart, what they've done to his business, to his children, to his grandchildren, to his everything about his life. There is no man a uh, human that could be all the way to Jesus that could have withstand this without changing inside. And, and I'd like to see a little more of that too, but, but back to the, the concept of what will be different in how he chooses people. I think that's really important and has to be addressed uh, openly. I mean, I understand all these people that go uh, like you were talking about Dilly and all them, like it's, it's Trump or Trump is, does no wrong. He's the one, whatever. But I do look back and I, I look at the people that he surrounded himself with and how they got there. And I wonder, you know, who, who what's the choices now and how are they going to be made? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say this and I can tell you, I can tell you more, more off the air, but I, I'll just, I'll put this out there that I think RFK is more open to being VP than, uh, than most people are letting on and that what he previously, previously was. Um, and I've, I've got some info on that that I'll, I, I'll tell you off the air. Uh, right. But but I but I think but I think specifically with with Trump, one of the things one of the th one of the things that's been frustrating for me, but then also very uh, I've been very understanding about is I don't like the way that Trump has been handling his campaign this time around. And a lot of it, I think, has been very personal. You look you look at his post on True Social. He's just like on, on a vendetta and yeah. all that. However, at the same at the same time, like you said, he's a human being. Look what he's going through. Like he's he's quite literally fighting for his life because if any of these lawsuits go th goes through with a corrupt jury, corrupt judge and all that, yeah. he's spending the rest of his life in prison. So when when you when you actually look at it from that perspective, you get you get a little a bit of empathy and you get you get yeah. a little bit of sympathy for the guy because he's literally taking on the deep state. Like like we've all been talking about the corruption of the intelligence agencies and the deep state and all the craziness that's going on. He's literally living this every single day taking them out because they're trying to take him out as an individual person. And then like he's always said, once they go through him, it's going to be the rest of us. Yeah. And and so that's really where this fight is being waged. And I think that for a lot of us, we can have a little bit of understanding when it comes to, OK, we don't like maybe like the, his rhetoric. We don't like the way he's talking. You know, you know, he's he's way too brash, way too personal and all that. But also at the same time, look what's happening to him way more personal than anything he's ever lashed out for sure. Yeah. And the people that are are still I don't know how it is, but the people that still watch um, anything related to NBC Universal Comcast or anything related to Disney ABC or uh, CNN or MSNBC, they have no idea the stakes of this nation. And it is such a disservice to make it all about Trump because it's got nothing to do with Trump at the end of the day. The real people that want Trump, you know, 
eliminated are the globalists. It is not coming from within. And this is the 1% of America. You know, the, the craziest part to me of all of this is when Mika Brzezinski, who is the daughter of Zig Brzezinski, her brother is the, you know, ambassador to Poland in the middle of the entire NATO operation, the Ukraine operation, the other brothers at Atlantic, that he created the Trilateral Commission. And this woman and her and her husband, who is very suspect as well, used to be a Republican, by the way, um, that they are the source of news or seeing Andrew Weissman, who completely and totally did the entire Mueller thing, hates Trump, you know, and then there's a lot of these other characters around them and all these different NGOs. And then we had Alex Soros and The Atlantic and all of this. I I, I wish the American people or at least because those globalist owned organizations, those BlackRock run MSNBC and all this, all this, they're never going to tell the people the truth. But if I, I if the people fully understand, stood that these people, Nicole Wallace, Joy Reid, they are they are on the other side. They this is not about Trump. This is about making sure that this agenda, this agenda 2030, this Davos agenda is the rule of law, law of the land all over the world, especially America, because these useful idiots believe that they'll be at the top of that food chain with their friends at the Council of Foreign Relations and, and such. But at the end of the day, I honestly believe that these people are, are again, like in Mao's China or everywhere else, they are very mistaken because this, this doesn't end well. Because another thing that didn't come out on any of the news coverage about Davos and the people that really want to take out Donald Trump, which are not the Democratic Party, they are those who control it, is that the biggest delegation and the person who was treated as the most important person in Davos was the number two to chair to, to, to G, to President G. The number two in the Chinese Communist Party was the bell of the ball on, on the ground in Davos. Uh, he had the biggest delegation. He was getting standing ovations. There were many, many panels talking about how efficient uh, the CCP runs their society um, and all of that. So, again, we're at a place where the American people and this gets into something else that I, I want to ask you after this, where the American people still do not are not getting the information uh, that the buying off of our of our farmland, which is now much higher I also believe that a lot of the real estate, like I'm here in Florida, I also was looking because, you know, I lived in West Hollywood for 20, 18 years. And, you know, so once in a while I reminisce about my, my, I, I loved living in there and it was the politics and then the communism <laughs> that made me leave, but I love California. So I sometimes look at real estate there. I look in Florida, it is off the charts. And this is, I believe that a lot of this real estate is also being bought by the Chinese com com communist party. And I think a lot of things are happening there and they're getting the red carpet rolled out by the globalists. They are placed as, as Gates and, and uh, you know, Fink and obviously Rockefeller, Kissinger. They've always said they want the CCP's model of of actually running the people, communism, to be worldwide totalitarian. So to me, I still feel like there's so many people in America that if I don't know how to do it, but if they just understood it and the click happened, and they realize that that is real and that is the real threat. And it's not about any person. It's not even about D.C. that a lot of things would change. What are your thoughts on on that, that kind of siloing of that very pertinent information? And if that actually did get out and I know you have plans for a, a platform to kind of help that along. Would that change things on on a scale that the people would um, maybe stand up that right now have no idea what's going on? I, I think it does. And, and, and I'll say that and it's very anecdotally. But ta again, talking to a lot of people out, out here in communist California, the vast majority of people that I know are lefty. Right. And yeah. so so I always try. I always try, I always enjoy having conversations with, with people that I disagree with. And so it's like it, I, I, made, I made a joke uh, on, on Twitter uh, right before Thanksgiving. I'm like, OK, so what, what controversial conversations are you guys going to have over, over Thanksgiving? Because like that, like you just ask questions and see where the conversation goes. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, what's interesting to me is that. If you can preface things with, okay, what do you actually believe? Like, what are your values? I would argue the vast majority of Americans are still conservative. I, I think a lot of people would disagree with me on that. But when you actually get down to, do you believe that like the house that you live in right now, is that your personal property? Right, yes. exactly. Like when you're making it very personal, when you, when, do you, do you enjoy paying taxes yourself? No, I definitely wish it was less. You know, you get into some of those kinds of things, you start getting people thinking about that. And then you contrast that with what, 
the I left, agree. what the progressive left, what the globalists, what the World Economic Forum, what the UN, what all these entities are pushing, all of a sudden now you can begin to see that light bulb click. They may not come full circle right, right away. Right. They may not do that. But I also experienced that when, when it came to COVID, talking to a lot of people that have been vaccinated were totally 100% vaxxed. When my wife and I got covid um, over Christmas, I think it was of, of 2020 or 2021, I forget, you know, 2021 it was, uh, we, were, we were sitting there and my, my wife was pregnant. We both got COVID. All of our lefty friends were like, oh my gosh, you guys are going to die. Like right. you guys are seriously going to die because you guys did not get vaxxed. All my conservative friends were like, oh, oh, that's, that's an amazing thing. You get the antibodies, you pass it on to the baby, the whole, the whole deal. Right. What, what's, what's interesting is to, after that, then talking to a lot of my friends and you start, you start talking about your constitutional rights. You start talking about the actual studies, like the study that they cited to actually approve the Comirnaty jab, like that that one they literally showed it it, it quote unquote improved your protection by zero point seven percent for seven days after getting vaxxed, and they didn't include how many people died in it because they said it wasn't pertinent to the study. When I when I portray that information to all these people that have been hundred percent pro vax got multiple boosters, all of a sudden they're that that blows their entire argument apart because I'll tell them go look at the letter. You look at the letter, all of a sudden you start to see that light bulb go off. And now they're definitely not going to go get the, the the next jab. But you have to portray in that way. And that's where I think that that, that kind of wake up moment happens. When you, when you start with what do they already believe? What are their values? The majority of Americans are still have still have conservative values when you really push them on it. And then you and then you contrast that with the facts. I think that we can really start to wake up a lot of people, which again is is a lot of my is a lot of my motivation for building out pickaxe because you know it's going to be a to a platform where you're going to be able to have conversations. We're not going to allow those silos and those algorithmic bubbles and those algorithmic right. walls to be there to where we can start to have those conversations again that we just we can't have these days. Yeah, and it's so important, and uh, and I'm excited about pickaxe. We'll talk about it in a second, and I'll, and I see a bunch of different people actually being solution oriented because, as I always say, from being a writer all those years uh, in LA, it's not about the, the the messaging. It's not about that. It's about the distribution, and they really didn't really make people aware of how much power distribution has, and you're finding solutions for that is is really going to help going forward. Um, at the same time, I want to say that. Um, you, uh, you have a great point and we can do that with everything. We can do that. And this is what I say to everyone too, because I've been on a road trip basically nonstop because I cannot stand flying since the beginning of COVID to now it's just got deteriorated so much. It's, it's just not an experience I like. So if I can drive, I drive. So I stop a lot and I talk to a lot of different people and I honestly agree with you. I think left of center, probably 15%, right of center, 15% doesn't believe that either party is functioning as, as they understand it or believe that it was, they don't really identify, but we're stuck in this, at least until 2024, we're stuck in this opportunity where we have to choose to participate, which is another thing we have to deal with on the other side. But at the same time, I think agree on most things. And the things that we don't agree on are things that at the end of the day do not matter on our day to day life. They're just thrust at us. I saw a real push. And I know that this is what they're doing. I mean, Kamala Harris put up a big sign, trust all women. I, I say to people all the time, I have been in business for, you know, 30 years, one way or another, especially in entertainment. Nobody is more vicious that I've dealt with than very, very, very powerful, angry women. So trust all women is the most ludicrous thing that came out during the Kavanaugh. But they're really going to push abortion as their thing. Um, bodily autonomy, women's rights, all this got really very, very little to do with what we are dealing with in America on a massive scale when it comes to the economy, the border, foreign policy, uh, you know, everything that the whole COVID, all of that. And of course, all those same people did believe that we should all get the shots or be put in quarantine camps. So I see the messaging and we have to counter it. So I say stay away from those and go to the thousands of things we do agree on and what's happening, especially what's it's in your state for sure. But also we left New York because it just got so crazy. The thing at the border is very uniting to people at this point. They know it's not humanitarian and it's affecting our hospitals, our schools, our this Cloward Piven we talked about last time, collapsing the financial, uh, which it should be dismantled anyway, but this social blanket the, this the situation that we have with welfare it's getting demolished so you know there's just i just think what you're saying is so important for people to to get to which is 
ask questions that force people to use their critical thinking to get beyond the politics to the actual like facts of what is affecting people daily. And you get, you cut through a lot. And like I say, I say to everyone now, I, I don't, I'm not left or right Republican or Democrat. I'm just looking for what is right and what is wrong. And I'm going towards what is right. And what, what, you know, purports to uh, accelerate my freedom and liberty and not th not put me into slavery, slavery and surveillance. Um, so let's uh, let's wind up on um, first things first. You uh, have a great podcast that everyone should follow. And I want you to make sure to tell everyone where that is. And also uh, talk about pick pickaxe while you're doing that and, and what the concept is and other people out there. If you have these skills and stuff, we could use as many of these uh, platforms as possible. But you can do it because Jeff's doing it. So let's talk about both of those before we uh, wrap it up. Oh yeah, definitely. I pre I appreciate it. So you guys, you guys, I've got uh my 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 show, the Jeff Dornick show. I air it every day, uh, eight p.m. five o'clock, eight p.m. Eastern, five o'clock Pacific time on Rumble, uh, the other platforms as well. But Rumbles are kind of our our main push right now. So you guys can either subscribe at the Jeff Dornick show on Rumble or Freedom First Network. If you do Freedom First Network, get the whole lineup of shows that, that are on there. We we I think we're airing like four or five, six episodes a day over there. So you guys can uh, subscribe over there as well. I've got a Substack, Jeff Dornick .substack .com. Most of it, most of that is just pushing out pushing out my show uh because a lot of people are like i can never find you on x i can never find you on all these platforms and so i'm like go subscribe go subscribe on there you guys will get, you guys will get every single episode you guys never have to miss one so uh so definitely do that jeff dorn .substack but yeah pickaxe has really been a project i've been working on since it's been almost a year now that, that we've been building this thing out uh and and the, the whole the whole idea for that was especially when after elon bought it and he made all these promises about okay we're gonna have free speech we're gonna bring back you know everybody onto the platform that that, that was when i was allowed to be back on because i i got kicked off for talking to a black conservative about uh about why the african-american community was so uh, hesitant to get vaxxed and he's like well it's it's uh you know it's all the testing that the cdc did it's it's all that kind of stuff they don't they don't trust the government with any right. kind of injection Right. And so I got I got banned for that one. But what was interesting is that is I it's like I kept seeing this this carrot being dangled in front of conservatives. You guys are gonna have free speech. You have this platform back, and it kept saying like, look, you'll be able to monetize. You'll be able to do this. You'll be able to do this. And it's like, yeah, but if you don't let anybody see my content, then right, guess exactly. what? None, none of this matters. And then they came out with the with the policy that they went all over mainstream media promoting. We have freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. Like that, that to me was the final just line in the sand where I'm just like, this is, this is not actually free speech. And I probably said this on your show before, but, but this is the anecdote that I always give. And this, this is what makes perfect sense to everybody is it's as, it's as if Elon Musk set up a stage in the middle of Times Square with a microphone and speakers and said, we're gonna have a free speech event. Get up there. You can say whatever the heck you want. And you get up there and then he mutes your microphone because he doesn't like what you're saying. And, and you're like, I thought this was free speech. And he said, it is. You can say whatever you want to the microphone, but I don't have to let anybody hear it. That's, That's what's analogy. happening. That's what's yeah. happening on X. And that was especially really started... this week. It went it went yeah. wild. This uh, it's it's kicking in and it's caused uh, right when Davos happened. This went wild. The World Health Organization. You know, you're right. And people have to really just be honest about that. That the hero worship and the and from very powerful big people and, and especially in the freedom movement, all of a sudden he's a god. Uh, I would really I would really uh, reevaluate that. So continue because it's important that everyone realizes this and finds other op other options. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, definitely. And so, so they got freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. And everybody's like, why would he do that, right? Well, why would he allow Alex Jones back on the platform? Why would he allow all these people back on the platform? Well, and then they then they launched their artificial intelligence. And I'm like, that is why they did it. Because what they're doing is they're funneling all of our data into the, the XAI. And I think what's it called? Grok or whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Grok, I think, it, yeah. It's all this information to where it's made their artificial intelligence the most relevant up to date AI on the planet because it because it's taking real time all of our information. So they're still going with all the censorship, but they're just allowing you to say it on the platform so that way they can funnel it through the AI. And then it's just more data collection. Now they know you, they know how to manipulate you, they know how to do all that kind of stuff. So when I when I'm building out pickaxe, I'm committed, okay, we're not using AI, we're not going down that route, we're not doing algorithms that that, that are based upon your interests. And and a big reason is that I don't want to silo anybody off into their own little algorithmic bubble right. of only people that agree with them. And so we're gonna have a completely constitutionally protected free speech platform. It's gonna right. be written into our terms of service that you know and, and I've, I've actually been considering if you're going to report a post that that you that you have to read the first amendment and then check a box saying that this post violates the first amendment um but but we're, but we're doing but what we're doing all of that to try to actually bring back some semblance of free speech 
And so what what, what most people know, because I haven't really made a, a big announcement about it, but it's basically when we're launching, it's going to be a hybrid between uh, between Twitter and Substack. In, in it, but we're kind of taking the best of both worlds to where you'll be able to write articles, you'll be able to have video content on there, uh, you know, through Rumble directly on there, but it'll be watchable and playable directly on the platform. There'll be monetization opportunities for content creators, no, no matter how big or small your following is. Uh, you know, right. so, so we're, we're not we're not doing any of the stuff that X is doing. We're just taking the best of everything that's out there and then putting it on here all under the guise of constitutionally protected free speech and i'm not i'm not going to play censor i'm not going to i'm not going to play any of that it's going to be written into our terms and conditions and our rules and policy for the platform that we're not going to mess with you now you go out build your following build your audience create great content we'll try to help amplify it as best as we can and then you can also monetize directly on the platform as well so that's the whole idea behind it Right. Awesome. Because I, I was kicked off of YouTube too. I never, I mean, uh, YouTube as well, but Twitter as well. And I never got back my, my, the Mel K show. I had to start from zero and I'm so yeah. censored and siloed and nobody sees anything I put out. And I'm actually putting out stuff as you are that people need to see and they're not, and there's a reason. And, uh, so I really appreciate what you're doing. I look forward to being a part of it as well and joining you guys. And, uh, also for me, you can follow me at Mel K show because I had to start a new account <laughs> And you can follow Jeff Dornick over there at his name. And uh, I also wanted to say, for as scary as times are, you know, I have a lot of partners uh, on my partners page at themelkeshow.com, like Dr. Zelenko Z-Stack and Dr. Stella and and all kinds of op opportunities for you to stock up now for what we are talking about. Whatever it is, just be prepared. That's a big thing him and I both are pushing out there. And, and we're not just pushing it out there because, you know, it's something to say. We really, really do both believe that 2024 is going to be a wild year. And the more prepared you are on all all fronts, the better. So go to the Mel K show partners page, see what you need there, stock up on it now. And uh, any last words, Jeff Dornick, and then I, I will see you regularly as we travel down this uh, year of chaos. Oh yeah, definitely. I, well, I appreciate you having me back on again. It's always a blast talking to you. Uh, just, just for, for everybody that's watching this, it's like this year is going to be chaos. I always say 2023 was the year of distraction. This is going to be the year of chaos. But the thing is, is that it, for you, keep your eye on the prize. The, the eye is saving America. So don't get us, don't, 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 don't get distracted by all the craziness and this distraction over here and this distraction over here. Focus on what can you do in your local area in order to have a voice, whether whether it's getting involved with something, whether it's getting the truth out there or just talking to your friends and family. But just do something. If you can just do something and everybody starts doing something, we can actually start to start to turn things around. So um, that's my that's my last word. Yeah, and you're doing an amazing job, and uh, I'm I'm glad to call you a friend. And we will be uh, marching marching through this uh, this next year uh, side by side, trying to stand for freedom and liberty and truth and justice. And I believe that uh, we are making a big big difference out there. And you definitely are. Thank you, sir. Uh, all of his links are below. Please follow Jeff Dornick, and he will be back regularly. See you next time. Hi guys, you know for months and months, me and Mike Al have been talking about the water supply, what is in there, there are pharmaceuticals in the water supply, there are all these chemicals, lots of pollution, we've had all these natural disasters that leave our water not nearly as clean and certainly not as God intended, we know how important water is for our health, so we have been on a mission to try to find the best alternative to the water that is out there, including bottled water, which of course we did a whole show on everything that's in bottled water, which is almost as shocking as what's in our natural water now so we found the best partner we could in healthy hydrogen uh, this is a portable bottle that I use all the time but also there are many options over there you can get a house a full house system you can get a tabletop system you can get uh, for your shower for your office and business they have so many great options if you go to the Mel show.com we have partnered with them so it's on our partners page healthy hydrogen I am telling you right now, the difference in this water and what it will do to your health in general is incredible. Uh, if you have inflammation, your immune system has problems, anything that you are thinking you don't know the solution for, this could be the game changer. We've been looking for the missing piece and I believe the missing piece is the water. We are so excited. They have so much science backing all of their products. They have been tested by all different groups out there that do this for a living and look at water really in depth. We have the hydrogen aspect, which is truly fascinating. Nothing is more important than water. We all know 
that. So make sure you're putting the best water in your body. And I assure you, this is a true, true game changer that you will see right away and will improve your health and your family's health going forward. Go check out the Mel K Show Partners page, Healthy Hydrogen, and get your health back from the inside out, starting with God's great water. We will see you soon. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. The narrative is falling apart, but as it does, there's so much of this fraudulent disinformation, misinformation, censorship coming from the globalists. And what we need to do is be focused on the facts, cut through everything, be discerning and get it first and foremost out there to everyone. It is important that you know what is going on. Censorship is getting nuts. You guys know it. There's accounts all over the place that are fake, that are not me. I know you guys send me emails and I really appreciate it. And you report it and it's on Telegram and Instagram and Twitter and they're not me. So I'm super excited to announce We The People with Mel K. Be the first to join. It's a VIP community, just you and me behind a paywall, no trolls, no nothing. We get to know each other. I will give you the facts first. I break a lot of stories a long time before other people. We can talk about past, present, future, history, what we're doing now, solutions for going forward, what 2024 is gonna look like. I'm gonna do breaking news, do a lot of deep dives. I'm gonna bring that information to you guys first in a live Q&A every week. So please click the link below and join me over there. We are going to create a community, a community that is censorship proof, it's cancel proof, it's truth, it's transparency, it's on the road to God, country, justice, everything that we want in one place. This is the most incredible, amazing time to be alive. As hard as it seems and as difficult as the battle has been for you guys and definitely for me, all I know is that we all are part of the solution. We are all involved and invested and you guys have the passion that I have. So let's join together on live Q and A's once a week with me, Mel Kay, we the people of the United States taking back this nation. This is so exciting guys. I've been dying to do this and we finally got the technology right. So please join me. Click the link below. Can't wait to get started.